Hey guys, Trip here. Now, I'm still working on that Vampire the Masquerade video, but something happened the other day that was just too important to ignore. On September 21st, Microsoft announced it was buying ZeniMax Media for $7.5 billion. That means Bethesda Game Studios and all its subsidiaries are now under the sweet, loving bosom of the company that owns your soul. In case you haven't been following Bethesda, this buyout includes blockbuster franchises like Doom, Dishonored, Wolfenstein, Fallout, and The Elder Scrolls. Now, considering I have a reputation around here for bashing Bethesda, a lot of people have been asking what I think about this. And honestly, until this very moment, I wasn't sure what to think. So instead of just shooting out the first nonsense that came out of my mouth, that was the first plan, I decided to keep my mouth shut, do a bit of research, learn some history, and take a glimpse into the internal workings of this company. So why did this buyout happen? What's been going on behind the scenes at Bethesda? What does this mean for the future of the company? Well, let's take a look. Now, before I talk about the buyout itself, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention a few obvious points about how these buyouts affect the industry as a whole. Regardless of what I think of this specific buyout, a few facts remain the same, and they're worth bringing up. So yeah, time to talk about how late-stage capitalism ruins the video game industry. <laughs> Firstly, this sort of consolidation is always bad on some level. Mergers like this nullify the only good things that capitalism supposedly provides, competition and consumer choice. Removing customer choice and annihilating competition is a capitalist's wet dream and a gamer's wet nightmare. And this is probably obvious, but mega corporations have no obligation to make art. Typically, those at the top have no interest in making art, let alone fun games. The only thing that drives these people to do anything is the fear of losing a sale. So when a company is the only one making a certain type of game, they have no incentive to actually make it better. For reference, look at Bethesda before this buyout happened. You'd be surprised at just how many problems in this industry boil down to out-of-touch executives who are incentivized to absorb competition, follow played-out trends, homogenize their games, over-monetize them, and fire their employees after launch to sustain the illusion of perpetual growth. Now, I would much rather live in a world where the Elder Scrolls, Fable, and the Outer Worlds were all part of separate companies, pushing each other to improve and innovate. But as long as I'm dreaming, I'd like a pony. Secondly, and I'll keep this one short, Microsoft is an evil company. I'm not going to go into detail here because then I'd be here all day, so instead I'll let someone much smarter than me explain this. Ross Scott from Accursed Farms went on a rant about how Microsoft has historically damaged both the gaming industry and the software industry in general. Microsoft's goal has always been to insert itself into everything and to entirely control what you can and can't do on your own computer. This is a company that went to war with the IRS and won. Not because they were in the right, but because they paid off enough politicians to get their investigation defunded. They are about as close to a cyberpunk megacorporation as you can get. But because we live in a capitalist nightmare world, it's often impossible to create anything without selling your soul to the devil. So where does that leave us? Well, okay. Despite the Marxist screed I just went on, guys, I'm starting to think this is a good thing. Now hear me out. I was ready to mock this buyout, like I do with everything Bethesda does. I was going to bring up Microsoft's history with Rare, their disastrous Xbox One launch. There's a lot I could poke fun at here. But then I took a few days to cool off, gather my thoughts, and listen to some experienced YouTubers give their takes on things. And after listening, learning, and thinking about this for the past few days, I think this could be the best thing to happen to Bethesda since Morrowind. To explain why, we're going to have to take a look behind the scenes, and take a look at what's actually been going on at Bethesda for the past few years. Now, most of this info is sourced from a podcast I enjoy called Castle Super Beast. Pat, one of the co-hosts, has a ton of sources within the games industry, Bethesda included. Recently, he spoke with an employee at Bethesda, who offered a pretty candid view into a famously insular company. To put it simply, Bethesda has been aware of its slow descent into mediocrity for years. In particular, they're aware that their engine is 
garbage and ask for funds to improve it pretty much every year. For those wondering, Bethesda's engine has been chugging along for over 20 years now. It's had a few facelifts here and there, but it's often cited as the reason for many of the core mechanical issues in Bethesda's games, from its numerous bugs to its baffling gameplay limitations. This archaic, half-broken relic of an engine is the reason why some employees are quitting the company. There isn't a programmer alive who wants Fallout 76 on their resume right now, and they are well aware of this company's dwindling reputation. So on a regular basis, the people working at Bethesda beg the higher-ups to give them funding to completely overhaul the engine. The board of directors reject these requests every time because the games make money regardless of how broken they are. This is what it all comes down to. After years of witnessing and documenting the slow descent of this company, we finally understand what happened, and it's frighteningly simple. Out-of-touch suits prioritizing short-term profit over innovation and quality. So as much as I love to bash Todd Howard on this show, I think this goes beyond his head. This also might explain the endless clusterfuck of Fallout 76. Yet again, a bunch of out-of-touch executives who don't understand video games trying to chase the latest trend at the cost of everything else. If I sound like a broken record here, I promise, it's the music that's broken, not me. So if these sources are to be believed, many of the issues plaguing Bethesda lately are due to the board of directors at ZeniMax, Bethesda's parent company. It's worth noting that this buyout was likely a very recent decision, given the exclusivity deals Bethesda has in place with Sony. It's also worth noting that this buyout was made public shortly after Robert Trump, a member of the board at ZeniMax, kicked the bucket. For now, we can only speculate what was happening behind the scenes, and who specifically was behind the slow destruction of Bethesda. But this strikes me as a company going through big changes, ready to make some big moves. Now that Microsoft is taking the reins, I'm honestly unsure what happens to these executives, but at the very least, they are no longer the highest authority at Bethesda. So, old executives are out, Microsoft is in, but does that solve the core problems at Bethesda? I ask this because an engine can't write a good story, nor can it make a convincing world on its own. I feel like in the year 2020, this is probably a lukewarm take, but Bethesda games are badly written, and they have been for quite some time now. I would go as far as to say that Bethesda games have the worst writing of any big budget RPG company. I mentioned this years ago, but most of the people responsible for the writing and world building of Bethesda games left after Morrowind, and they haven't really been replaced. Ever since, Bethesda games have been running off the fumes of previous installments, unable or unwilling to tell a decent story on their own. Sorry gang, a new engine ain't gonna fix that. But as far as writing goes, I can only see this getting better under Microsoft. At the very least, they have nowhere to go but up. With all this financial backing, all these impressive game companies under Microsoft's umbrella, can you imagine if The Elder Scrolls VI is just as stripped down, restrictive, unimaginative, and as poorly written as Skyrim? They really have no excuse at this point, and people are going to be scrutinizing their games like never before. Maybe this buyout finally allows them to hire a dedicated writing team, to invest more in player expression, choices, and modern RPG mechanics. But I can't help but wonder if this is all too little too late. Because here's what this all comes down to, and it's something I warned about years ago. The world has moved on from Bethesda, at least as a developer. Skyrim is a dated meme, and Fallout 4 is just a weird memory at this point. Open world games have come so far since Fallout 4, and there's plenty of modern RPGs that put Skyrim to shame. With games like The Witcher, The Outer Worlds, and upcoming games like Avowed combining these genres and improving on Bethesda's formula, there's simply no room for them anymore unless they completely change the landscape of this industry. There is no way Bethesda could turn the tide under the thumb of the old executives. But now we have a chance to see what they're capable of without these Luddites holding them back. I know I've been negative for most of this video, but I'm going to level with you guys here. I gave up on Bethesda years ago, 
you all saw it happen in real time. What was once a beacon for everything I love about video games became a depressing cesspit of apathy and mediocrity. But Bethesda has a chance now. A chance to become the studio I grew up idolizing. The studio that inspired me to make this channel and talk about games with you guys. I'm not saying this buyout fixes every problem the company ever had. I'm saying that, for the first time in years, Bethesda's actions are in their own hands unbound by the forces that have been crushing them over the past decade. Now, I hate putting my faith in any corporation, but Todd Howard has already announced that, after all these years, they're finally going to overhaul the engine. That's already an improvement over the old executives. So what does Bethesda do with this newfound freedom? Are we about to enter a new renaissance of Elder Scrolls and Fallout games? Or will Bethesda fall back into their old ways, content to stagnate as the industry moves beyond them? Maybe Microsoft becomes just as draconian as their old executives, stifling innovation and shutting down mods. But maybe, just maybe, there's hope for this company. For the first time in years, I genuinely have no idea what's next for Bethesda. And that kind of excites me. But hey. That's just my opinion. Hey guys, Trip here. I hope you liked that video, and if you did, please make sure to subscribe, hit the bell, all that weird shit you're supposed to say at the end of a video. So, um, instead of my usual outro, I decided to do something a bit different. Now, in the last video, I ended things with a clip from one of my streams and that went over pretty well and I definitely enjoyed showing that to you guys. So I think we're gonna do that again. So yeah, enjoy this little clip of me being a dumbass in Red Dead 2. And if you like this clip, be sure to follow me on Twitch. I am Psychotrip, what is it? Oh yeah, Psychotrip Streams, good Lord. I'm gonna leave that little blooper in just cause it was funny to me. See you guys. But anyway, um, you might want to move out of the way, buddy. Uh, uh actually, uh, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. J Jason Risington, a, a, a series of mistakes were made, Jason Risington. A series of mistakes were made. Don't worry, buddy, I'm on my way. I wanted, I, I wanted you to see the surprise, but th the surprise is ruined. John, the surprise is ruined and there are just body parts everywhere. John, I'm scared. John, help me. Did you bomb the police station? John, John, I just need your help. I don't need your judgment, okay? No, I... you're getting my judgment. 